How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be creating this animation right here. I had a lot of fun creating it. So we're gonna be dealing with geometry nodes. We're gonna have some fun with some really simple kind of rudimentary modeling. Uh, then we're gonna throw that into geometry nodes, make some cool animations, display some stuff, and create a really interesting looking loop. Uh, with that being said, my Christmas sale just started. If you use the code D3HOLIDAY, you can get my shading course, my animation course, and the real-time materials add-on, all of that 25% off. So if you wanna get all of that stuff, you can. Uh, with that being said, let's get into the tutorial. So when we're finished, we're gonna have a project file that looks similar to this one. Everybody on Patreon, you have access to that now on all three tiers. You can check out the Patreon linked in the description. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is pull up a brand new Blender file and we're gonna dive right into this. So first we're gonna go ahead and get our cube that we're gonna model. I'm just gonna hit G and move it kind of out of the way. And then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna hit the period key to kind of center that out. And then I'm gonna hit tab. And then right here, I'm gonna go to the face select. I'm gonna hit this face, I'm gonna hit I and then S. Bring that in a little bit. And then E for extrude, we're gonna bring it up. And then hit I again, that's I for inset. And then E for extrude, and we're gonna extrude it down. This guy here, we're gonna go ahead and just bring it down like that. We're gonna hit Control A, apply scale, and now we have something cool like this. You need to go to the modifiers and add in a bevel modifier, which is right here, and then just make these edges a little softer, just to make it look better. Now let's go ahead and hit Shift A, mesh and plane. Hit the period key to center that out. Now we're gonna start building this in geometry nodes. So we're gonna get this plane, we're gonna click on geometry nodes, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this window and click new. And then I'm gonna go ahead and delete this group input, search a, a grid, plug that into the geometry output. All right, so on the size, we're gonna go ahead and give it 10, which essentially scales it by five. I don't know why 10 corresponds to five. Couldn't tell you. We're gonna go with 13 here and 10 here. If we go to the wireframe view, we're now gonna have this pretty cool looking scene. Now what we can do is get in a instance on points, do that. And then right up here, we're gonna have that cube that we just modeled, just click it and drag it into the scene and plug the geometry into instance. It's gonna instance that on every point. And then here on the instance, you can just go ahead and scale it down to however you like it. I'm gonna go ahead and scale them till right before they start touching. Right there looks really good. Now we have this grid and we need to displace it in order to get these objects to move up and down and look really cool. So we're gonna go ahead and get a set position node and we're gonna go ahead and get a noise texture. We're gonna get a combine X, Y, Z. So we're gonna plug the factor into the Z because we just want it to go up and down. And the combine XYZ is gonna prevent the displacement from going this way or that way, just makes it go up and down. That's all we need to concern ourselves with. And then plug the vector into the offset. And now you can see some up and down going. We're gonna go here to 4D. And there's our animation, but it's just not going as high as I want it to go. So what we need to get is a map range. And then what we can do is use this two min and two max. And so we can bring this min down, bring this max up, and just kind of do this dance of exaggerating what both of them do. And then once you kind of get a height that you like, you can play with this W. And I'm gonna bring in a scale of one. And there we have it. And I think this is probably going too high. That looks pretty good right there. All right, so now we've created this. Now we need to go ahead and model those lines that go in between. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the tilde key, it's right above the tab key for me, and I'm gonna view it here. And we're gonna go ahead, shift A and get a plane, and then click new in this geometry node section. Delete that and get another grid. And then we're gonna plug this grid here. Now here on the size, we're gonna give it a size of 11. And I'm gonna to go to the wireframe view so I can see it. We want the lines to go in between these larger sections of the models. And so we're gonna go, we're gonna give the X vertices two and the Y vertices 11. And now you can see they fit nicely, not perfectly, but pretty nicely within here. And what that's gonna allow us to do is to start messing with this 
Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this one over here to the edge and we're going to get a join geometry. And then we need to get a transform. And that's going to allow you to move that. And here's the value in that. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this transform node, take this grid and plug it into the geometry section and then plug that into the join geometry and that creates another whole grid that we can then move up. And then what we can do again is just hit shift D on that transform, plug that into the geometry, plug that in the join geometry and then move this one an equal distance apart like this. And then you can just bring it over to the direct center. And there we have it. That is our lines. Now we need to model them because it's still just a plane. So we'll get a mesh to curve, curve to mesh, or you can just throw a wireframe modifier on it, but I prefer this just because it looks better. It's round. Uh, then we're going to get a circle curve and plug that into profile curve. And we're going to go 0 0.01 on that radius, and now we've created this. Uh, we're gonna bring it up now so it's visible amongst all these towers, and we're gonna get a set material node. Right there, I'm gonna go to the uh, render view, and we're gonna use EV for this. So I'm gonna click on the camera icon, and we're just gonna switch over to EV. I'm gonna hit the render button. Here in the material section, we're gonna click new, go from principle to emission, and then notice nothing happens. We can bring that strength up, nothing happens. We need to select it here. Now we can see our lights. Now let's do the same thing with this object, get a set material node. Plug that there, get a new material. I'm gonna make it a uh, metallic and a bit darker. And we're gonna get that material too. So now we have this doing that. So now we can start messing with the shading and messing with animation to go ahead and start completing this scene. So let's click on the shading tab and let's start playing with the materials here. And we're going to go to the uh, render view to edit this emissive material. So click on that uh, model there and it's going to bring this up. What we're going to do is get in a mix shader and then we're going to get a principled BSDF and we're gonna plug that into that shader. So what happens is you bring this over here, you just get just the emission, you bring the fact over here, you get just that new metallic material. Well, we're gonna make it metallic. So bring that over, bring the color to kind of match the kind of, build, we're gonna call them buildings, the buildings next to it. And now let's mix these two together with a noise texture. So we're gonna to need to get a noise texture, but first color ramp so we can manipulate the texture. And then if you have the node Wrangler add-on enabled, comes with Blender by default, hit Control T, that's gonna give you a mapping node and a texture coordinate node, and we're gonna use the object coordinate. All right, so now that we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my camera. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, get my camera, and then I'm just kinda of trying to aim my screen, Control Alt Zero, snap that to view. And then in the camera settings, we're going to go to this little green camera icon, go perspective to orthographic, and that is going to set up our scene to look really nice. And what I like to do is in the viewport display, uh, bring that passer, I'm not going to attempt to say that word correctly, um, that. So that's going to give us a better idea of what we're looking at here. So let's go back, click on the emissive material, and then we're going to bring the white portion of the color ramp in. We're gonna bring that, we're gonna bring that roughness all the way down. And then I'm bring the scale up. And what happens is if we play with the Z, we now have this really cool motion. Uh, and then you can kind of exaggerate more if you'd like, but that's gonna give you this. And then now you can go ahead and add whatever color you want in the emission material and then make it brighter. So this is gonna be our animation right here once we get to actually animating. Now let's click on this model. I'm gonna hit the period key to bring up the material. Let's make this material, but first let's go ahead and light it so we can see the material in context. So we have this whole scene, we need to light it. So first we're gonna to go to the world settings, go to the gray color, and bring it all the way down to black. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit, I'm gonna hit Shift A and I'm gonna go get a light and a spotlight. I'm gonna hit G and kind of move it over here. Um, in the camera settings right over here, I'm gonna give it myself 10,000 on the brightness. Sounds like a lot, uh, but we're going to need all of it. So we're gonna bring it over like this. You can see how that looks. And I'm gonna bring the radius high enough to where you can see it kind of hitting everything. Um, there we go, that's 10,000. All right, so 10,000 on the brightness, give it a slight blue hue. So now we can go ahead and start working on the rest of the scene. Um, and you can bring that light up or down to kind of hit more or less of your scene. But that's how that's gonna look. That's not final though. Let's go back to shading and start working on this uh, material. So click on this model here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color ramp two of them, so I'm gonna hit Shift D, hit G and move them. We're gonna get a mix shader right there, or a mix node, it's not a mix shader. And plug that into the roughness, that's not gonna do anything yet. We need to get a noise texture. I'm gonna hit Control T and use the object coordinate. And I'm also gonna get a Voronoi. Now we're gonna plug color of the Voronoi in here and the factor of the noise texture here. And now we have two textures competing with each other. So bring the factor over here, you get noise texture, bring the factor over here, you get Voronoi. Now, so for Voronoi, we're gonna to go to uh, Chebyshev and then I'm bringing that scale high enough up so that these details look big. And then we're gonna put that into a bump so we're gonna plug the color of the Voronoi into the height of the bump and then plug the normal into the normal. That's gonna give you these cool lines. And then let's bring the factor over to just the noise texture. I'm gonna bring that scale pretty high. Detail to 12, roughness pretty high up. And then I'm gonna bring this in like that, this in like that. Bring the black up a little bit and the white down a little bit. So now you have this really cool looking noise texture that's adding some grunge. And then what we do is just bring that factor over the, to the Voronoi and just slide it over a little bit to start to introduce the noise into the Voronoi. Now you have this combination of Voronoi and noise that just looks really cool. Um, I'm gonna bring the color of this down a little bit so it's not so bright. And there we have shaded completely. Now we can animate everything and call it a day. So I'm gonna click here. So I'm gonna click on geometry nodes, click on this model here, and we're gonna animate the W on the noise texture. So bring your W to zero, and then right over here, pull up and get a timeline. So I'm gonna go back to frame zero, go to your edit, your preferences, make sure in the animation tab, your default interpolation is linear so that this can loop I'm gonna hit Shift D, get a noise texture. I'm gonna get a mix node, plug the factor into B. So now make sure both of these noise textures are precisely the same. Don't make anything, any changes to one of them that you don't change to the other one. Bring this factor to zero. Let's go ahead and start animating. So hit, hover over this W right here, hit I. And then right over here, this factor, hit I. And go to the end. I'm gonna type in three. You can type in uh, whatever number you want. The higher the number, the faster the animation. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slide this over and hit I and hit I. So now these two are initiated. Now that the not that you're uh, now that we're at the end of the time timeline, make sure this one is at zero, hit I. Now remember this one says three. So when we go to the end here and hit the back arrow to frame zero, type in negative three. So whatever number you decide to use. This one needs to be positive of that, this one needs to be negative of that, and this factor needs to go from this side to that side. And if we press play, and we'll go to the end here, you have a seamless loop. And this was something I taught uh, yesterday in, in all the different loops and stuff. Um, for me, it's not going high enough, so we're gonna bring this down, bring this up, bring that down, bring that up. Now we can get a lot more contrast in this animation in terms of how high things go, which looks really, really awesome. All right, that's it. that's that. Now we need to go ahead and animate the texture on this one. So we'll go to shading, click on this object here, and we just need to animate that. And what I like is um, 
how the animation looks on the edge here. So if we click on the rotation, the animation is a little more straightforward than in the middle, and that's just because the texture is being circular, circulated around. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and uh, move this over until I can see the last one in frame. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drag up a timeline. Get that timeline going right there. Go back to frame one, click the back arrow to frame zero. I want to see all my, my whole timeline here. And then here I'm going to go put the Z at zero. So I'm going to hit I, go to the very end. And instead of 360, I want to do two rotations. So I'm going to do 720 keyframe. And now we have something awesome. So we can go back to layout and admire it. Of course, when you press play, it's going to look different than when you pause. Now I'm noticing some flaw here, and that's when I moved the, the bar. So I need to go ahead and bring that in like that. There we go. That fixed it. So now these guys are having a good time doing their thing. And you do have the option to add some haze. I ended up doing that in my final animation. So if you go to the world settings, go to volume, principled volume, and then bring that density down. Just bring a little bit. And that'll introduce some haze to your scene, which really makes it feel nice. Um, and this is it. This is the animation. Let me show you how to export that, and we will be on our way. So right here, go to the printer icon. Pick your resolution. I'm going to keep it by default. We're going to go from PNG to FFmpeg video, encoding to MP4, medium quality to perceptually lossless. And then I also go ahead and make sure where you want to save your file right there, and you'll hit render, render animation, and you'll have something awesome. Uh, but with that being said, that's it. Hope you learned some stuff. Don't forget about the Christmas sale. Use that code D three holiday um, on Blender Market. Get twenty five percent off everything. Uh, but with that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you learned some stuff.